Hi everybody, uh, Gary Porter again. I've made uh, some changes here. I've got got this insert that goes in the center, and the uh, coils are now going to be placed like this. They're going to be laid over there like that, and. Uh, by doing that, the north and south, uh, I'll show you in a second here as soon as I get the camera. Here. I'm going to turn around and look at the magnets. And you can see the placement of the coil is this one is going to cut this one, the north pole, and then the south pole at the same time is going to cut this one. And one is going to make the current go this way and this one is going to make the current go this way which is additive and that will give me my sine wave. This is going to be my test coil to determine how much voltage I'm getting uh, out of 17 turns and then I'll take it from there. Uh, the high voltage power supply the 160 I've got uh, I've got a bridge rectifier here tied in with the Variac and I cranked it up to 130 volts and I get 163 on the caps and the inverter 12 volt battery everything all that works just fine and uh, the only thing left is uh, these two batteries give me 24 volts to the uh, PC board uh, so I've got to get uh, the heat sinks and I'm good to go and the heat sinks and four switches for the PC board and uh, we're up and running We'll see what this 160 volts in these caps can do. And uh, I may need to add a few more caps, whatever, maybe a coil to prevent noise from going back into the inverter. Might not be a bad idea. Put a coil on the uh, on the DC side just to capture any any noise spikes that come from back EMF and something so it doesn't destroy the inverter. Anyway, uh, that's where we're at. Uh, 100 volts going into the motor could yield back 50,000 on back EMF. They've seen that before, and uh, that's I don't think I'll see that because it's automatically shorted out with the diodes back to the battery, but it can't get to the battery because, well, maybe it can get to the 24 volt battery. We'll see. Anyway, have a good.